Golf Channel Academy has come to the Jack Nicklaus Academy here in beautiful Jupiter, Florida. It's a perfect day for instruction. We're about to spend 30 minutes with the greatest champion this game's ever known. Whether you're a mid-handicapper, high-handicapper, low-handicapper, Jack Nicklaus is here with a gift of instruction to help your game get better. Now, Jack, it's been interesting watching you over the years. 51 years ago, you won your first amateur championship, 19 more majors beyond that. Tenacity, mental toughness has always been a hallmark of your game. Is that what separates you from other golfers, other champions? Well, David, you know, when you're, when you're playing, you don't think about that. You just go do it. And, uh, you know, I don't know what separates anybody. I, all I've done is going out and tried to do the best I could do, and whatever result I got is the result I got. And, uh, sure, maybe I was uh, mentally tough in, in, in some areas, but uh, then again, uh, you know, I think I had my deficiencies, and then I worked on those. Practicing with a purpose is something you've spoken about throughout your career. And let's talk about the amateur days. Talk about when you started and some of our high handicappers. The grip is the only contact a player has with the golf club. Can you tell us about the importance of the grip and what you do to grip the club properly? Well, you know, I think that uh, when I'm trying to teach a youngster, uh, anybody, I, I always say the foundation of a golf swing is the grip. And if you're, if you're not willing to put the golf club in your hands properly, Say, so, oh, well, this feels better. Well, you know, when you're seven or eight years old, okay. But, if, but even at seven or eight years old, you can, you can develop a foundation. And a foundation to me is, you know, your hands and your body function so that they hang to your side. Now you take those hands, put them together, separate them and close them. Whether you use interlocking, overlapping, baseball, I don't think that makes a lot of difference. But as this club is sitting here at my side, that's where I want to grip it. And, and, and to me, I grip it across the palm of my hand. I don't grip it down in the fingers. I mean, a lot of people grip it down the fingers. I don't believe in that. I believe that if I'm, I want the, the foundation of the, hitting into the golf ball, the most solid thing that I could have, and, and if I'm going to hit somebody, and I want to hit them with the back of my hand, I'm not going to flick them with my fingers. I'm going to hit them with the back of my hand. And that's where the golf ball is going to be. So I want that, be, that to be solid there. So if I have that, then if I'm going to uh, put my right hand on it, it's, it's like, as I say, it's just straight out. But I put that in the fingers. I put that across, right across, down in there. And if I put that across in the fingers, if I'm going to, if I'm going to, that's where I'm going to apply the club. I'm going to actually, you know, that's going to be the, the, the swinging of the club, the hitting. And if I, if I have it in the palm of my hand or in, not in here, then I don't have anything to hit with. If I'm going to throw a ball, I'm not going to throw the ball with the palm of my hand. I'm going to throw a ball that's in the fingers. And so the combination of being solid with the left and, and the applying and the touch with the right is the combination. Now, you put your hands down. Uh, they're pretty neutral. I mean, the, the V goes over the right shoulder with the left hand, and the V goes over the right shoulder with the, the right hand. You put those here. Now, much of my life, I played with a weaker grip. I played even to where I even put my left hand over a little farther and my right hand over a little further. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to eliminate a certain part of the golf course. I wanted to eliminate left. And I always felt like the best way to play golf is to eliminate one side or the other. And for me, I felt like the hook was the most dangerous shot, so I tried to eliminate that. And so I put my hands on the club a little weaker than, than most people, because my, my fault then would be to the right. So I would always use the left half of the fairway, or the left half of the green, or the left half of the shot of whatever I wanted to play, and always let, have, not necessarily fade the ball, but have a tendency to fade the ball. And, and you, you think your, your way around, and, and you use your grip to do that. So as I say, here's my normal grip, and most of my life, I played a little bit more right there. And I set the club face just slightly open. And then I just went ahead and hit the ball and tried to hit it as hard as I could with the right because I knew that I'd never turn it over. I'd always, if I got it just dead perfect, it would be pretty straight. If I didn't quite get it, it would just drop to the right. The Jack Nicklaus Academy is a growing part of the Nicklaus legacy. Jack's dedication to golf instruction is ever present in these state-of-the-art facilities. 22 academies operating in seven countries around the globe with more in the works, some of which will be equipped with the Jack Nicklaus Performance Solutions, a team of professionals who match equipment to players' body motor patterns and proper swing technique to maximize performance. Jack Nicklaus Academies are leading the evolution of golf instruction. Another thing Jack Nicklaus did is put together 26 of the best tips ever done on video. It's the best selling video of all time in terms of golf instruction. It's golf my way. Right now, you're not gonna hit a flag stick unless you have proper alignment. Let's check in on your golf my way tip number three 
It's all about alignment. My favorite golf tip of all time. Hopefully to help you at home. The best golf shot in the world really doesn't make any difference if it isn't aimed at the target. I want to show you a simple way of how I go about lining up a golf shot, and I think it'll help you. Is it easier to line up a two-foot putt or a 40-foot putt? Well, obviously, a two-foot putt. Likewise, I'm sure it's much easier to line up a tee shot from three feet than it is from 250 yards. For the purpose of this exercise, let's use this tee. Now, that's illegal to do that during a round of golf, but when, I'm, when I am playing a round of golf, I try to pick out a spot, whether it be an old tee or a piece of dirt or a divot or uh, some grass, something that's readily identifiable. And I try to draw a line from that spot back through the ball. So I'm sure you've seen me walk back behind a shot on television many times and, and do this. Where I'm, and what I'm really doing is I'm looking down the target line. I've picked a spot, I've got my ball, and I've got the target. And I try to draw a straight line between those, all those three spots. So let's see, this tee here looks, well, it's pretty much on line with the target. So I'm back here, I look at it, I'll walk up to the ball, and what I try to do is I try to take a parallel stance with the line that I've drawn, this imaginary line that I've drawn back through the spot, the ball, and the target. Now, of course, when I draw, uh, take a, a parallel stance, I then can get the ball right off the right spot in my, uh, my feet. And of course, I do not want my lines converging. In other words, I do not want my uh, uh, feet working to the right of the target or at the target. I want them parallel, not converging. So here we are, parallel lines. We know the ball's in the proper place in the stands. I look up for comfort, and now I'm ready to hit it. Not too bad for an old man, huh? For the best in golf instruction, go to GolfChannel.com. If you were a golf fan in 1986, you know where you were, Master Sunday, because you were watching this man claim in one of the most dramatic events in the history of the game. <laughs> your sixth Masters, your 20th major championship, 18th as a professional. We didn't know at the time what was going on inside the ropes, just that it seemed like you were birdieing every hole from nine on in. But tell us about it, 16, there with your son, obviously a poignant moment for anyone watching. But a tee shot was so key, and Jackie was so interested and so <laughs> rooting for you when well, the ball was in the air. What do you say? Well, Jackie, of course, you know, <laughs> at 15, when he jumped up in the air on that eagle, I said, when he went to North Carolina, if I know he jumped that high, he'd been playing basketball rather than golf. But we got to 16, and it was 175 yards that day. The pin was right behind the left bunker. Now, you can't, couldn't really see the bottom of the, of the pin, at least at my height, I couldn't. Jackie might have been able to see it. But I couldn't see the bottom of the pin. The obvious mistake there is, is left. Uh, I'm probably, I need to get myself in there because by his stairs has really got me by about two or three shots still at that time. And, uh, but I wasn't really worried too much about what anybody else was doing. I really need to do what I need to do. And of course, that's, that to me is a, is a tip in itself. Everybody worries about what everybody else is doing. You really can't. The only person you can worry about is yourself because mm -hmm. you're the only person you control. It doesn't make any difference what anybody else is doing. They're human. They're going to make mistakes too. Well, anyway, I lined it up maybe just a couple of feet right of the hole set myself pretty square and I hit the shot and I, I mean I made perfect contact with it and I'm sitting there looking at the shot and I see the ball take off and going away I didn't even bother to look at it anymore I knew where it was and I reached down picked up my tee and Jackie says be right and I made the cockiest remark I've ever made that I can ever imagine that I ever made and go and I just picked up my tee and says it is and I and it was because I knew where it was and of course it almost went in the hole it hit just past the hole and then came right back stopped about two and a half feet from the hole and I made the putt for the birdie you know, the things and the interaction that I had with my son mm -hmm. was worth far more than winning the tournament itself. The Masters was great, but to have your son with you and share that with you, 
that was really special. As far as that back nine is concerned, something the low handicappers maybe have, have trouble with is staying on a roll, keeping the momentum going when they're reaching numbers, as you shot 30 on that back nine, that they don't normally it's shoot. Tough. How you know, do you stay on it? It's tough. You get nervous. You say, how, how do I keep going? How do I sustain this? How do I make this out? How do I move forward? And so the average golfer, uh, when they're trying to come down the stretch, I mean, you got to understand what you can do, what you think you can do, but don't do it to just, just recklessly go after it so, so one shot ruins the whole right. thing. You've got to play good shots, good solid shots. You've got to take advantage of what's there. You take, take advantage of a situation when it, when it presents itself. If it doesn't present itself, you don't get, don't get uh, extra risky. You still have other shots to play. Just, just, just play smart. And so if you prepare yourself and think of what works for you, if it's a deep breath or if it's looking back and just sort of taking uh, and assessing the situation or whatever it might be for you, and I think that'll help. Well, we're going to finish this in the next segment. So in the meantime, we're going to take a deep breath, let our folks at home. <laughs> hopefully you've enjoyed the first three segments. We've got one more left with Jack Nicholas. Golf his way right here on Golf Channel Academy. Final segment coming up. Don't go anywhere. Whether it's the DVD or the iPhone app, Golf My Way has 26 spectacular tips for you to make your game better. Right now, we've got Jack Nicklaus, the author of that DVD series, to tell us a bit about, you know, maybe your favorite tip, favorite off-course tip, tell us. Well, off-course was basically what I learned about myself in mm -hmm. golf was Jack Grout. You know, Jack Grout and all the years that I worked with him, he never once stepped foot on a practice tee at a tournament, not one time. And what Jack taught me was to understand what my, what I, how I played, the mistakes I would make, and be able to adjust my, own, my game on the golf course. Mm -hmm. Bob Jones said that to me. He said he used to run back to Sterling Maiden. And he said his seven lean years, which lean for Bob Jones <laughs> from age 14 to 21, right. was the time when he had to learn about himself. And he said, when I learned to be able to correct myself on the golf course, that's when I became a player. Mm -hmm. Well, I, that, that sunk in here. And Jack Grout was pretty much into that same philosophy. He felt like I ought to be able on the golf course to fix myself when I needed to fix myself and be able to move on through the round. We talked about it earlier today. And I think that uh, that is one of the things that, that Jack did. I, I thought it was by far the best. I mean, I would, I, Jack Grout would a lot of times be at those tournaments. He'd be in the Masters. He'd be back in the bleachers back here. And I'd be on the practice tee. And maybe after a round, I was working on something. I didn't like what I was working. I turned around, I walked back. Jay Grout, what do you see? He says, Jackie Buck, he says, he says, your head's a little too far back. Or Jackie Buck, he says, he says, you got the club coming a little too far inside. But he would never say anything unless I ask. Mm. But most of the time, he'd make me go ahead and do that myself because that was what was important. But, you know, it was never, uh, it was never a big lesson from Jack. It was always just little things and little tips that would, would, would take what he taught me and let me advance with it and go to the next stage. Great for players at home and also tour players to pay attention to that. How about on course? Well, you know, I, I kind of like the one tip that I got, which really changed how I played around the green. And it was from Arnold. 1962, Arnold and I are playing a practice round at Palm Springs. And I'm chipping every ball off the edge of the green. And I mean, I don't care whether, I'm, whether I've got a five iron, six iron, nine iron, or what it is. And I'm sitting there hitting these little chip shots, you know, boom, and, and, and they're rolling up three, four, five feet from the hole. And Arnold said, why are you doing that? I said, what do you mean? I said, well, I'm just chipping. And he says, well, he says, think about something. He said, think about that chip. How good was that chip? I said, how far, how, how, what, how, how good was it? That was four feet from the hole. I said, that's a pretty good chip. He says, well, let's take your putter. What would happen if you were in the same exact place and you use your putter for the same shot? Would four feet be acceptable? He said, that'd be a pretty bad putt. Well, sort of think about that your, maybe your best, your, your worst putt will be just as good as your best chip. Now, sure, you might chip the ball closer sometimes, but you're not going to hit the ball very far from the hole with a putter. Mm -hmm. So he told me, he says, put that, put that chip and iron away. Let's get the putter out. When you're off the green, let's put it off the green. I use that the rest of my life. And I, people always, I always give clinics now. And I'm walking up and people say, well, what would you do from here? I said, well, 11 times out of 10, I'd putt it. <laughs> and that's what I do. When you are putting from off the green, how do you assess? I mean, obviously, it's going to be a nice level lie for you going through, and a nice uh, moan lie. How do you assess sort of how hard you hit it, things of that nature? I don't pay a whole lot of attention. It's just a little bit harder. But I always play, I always hit a little bit more 
on the upswing. I try to put a little bit more roll. I don't try to, I try not to, try to hit it on the downswing where I'm punching the ball down in the ground. I try to catch a little bit more on the upswing so that the ball will be rolling a little bit better over whatever I putt. Well, one of the magical components of this game is Arnold Palmer sharing his knowledge and, and his... Well, you know, I think that was pretty neat. I'm as a 22-year-old kid, <laughs> my first year on the tour, here's a top man in the game, came to me and said, Jack, I think this will help you. And I think that was nice. That's what golfers do. They share their knowledge and they want the other fellows to play, play better. And I, you know, I hope, hope Arnold doesn't regret that he did that, but Arnold and I have been great friends and, and, and for, for many, many years, and I thank him for that tip. Well, he may regret it because June that year, you ended up winning in a playoff of the U.S. Open, but well, I'm but, sure. But, but in that time, I chipped just because he was there. <laughs> Good deal. <laughs> well, he shared with you, you've shared with us, and obviously Golf My Way does that again and again. I appreciate the time you spent with us here at Golf Channel Academy and here at Jack Nicholas Academy. Thank you so much. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. <laughs>